Welcome back to the channel. My name's Andy, and this is Project Big MFR. We are uh, working on the brakes today, and all the fittings are underneath this running board. So I thought I'd remove this running board. And after fighting with these are pins, four pins, and rubber bushings with some cotter pins underneath. And they're just really difficult because this plate has a side piece on it. And you have to reach underneath and reach around. So all you could really see was uh, the side of my head trying to reach around and get underneath to get these uh, cotter pins out. I got this one, this one, this one, but this one I just couldn't reach because of the side cover. And I got it three quarters of the way out and I just gave it the old pissed off pull out. Which worked. It's stuck on there. We'll fix that uh, before we put it back on. I just have to get this bushing off of there, get it back where it needs to go, and uh, straighten that cotter pin out. Here's the best part these are the bushings. The master cylinders are here, all the lines are here and underneath here. The best part is some old dirt best part is after fighting with all that the lines and everything are still underneath the cover that holds the running board on and I don't think I can remove these covers because those are what hold on the actual master cylinders so we're just going to, have to work with it like this I guess we can reach these lines easier and uh, get in here easier before there was a side cover here, so it does help, but it doesn't help as much as I was hoping it would uh, Off camera we disconnected the This is the main feed line from the reservoir up by the operator panel um, Obviously not factory. It's just a hose. So we disconnected this hose clamp to slid it off to make sure uh, fluid was getting to this line and the line wasn't all swollen up and sealed off so they are getting fluid um, now we're going to loosen these and try to force brake fluid back in from the actual uh, wheel cylinders back there and see if we can get it to come out up here at the, the lines if i loosen these lines here that go back to the axle i should be able to force brake fluid back up through these we'll see Top off the fluid, and now I'm going to use the reservoir to suck up some uh, fluid in my syringe here. Yeah, there we go. So we have our bleeder screw loose. We have the line for our uh, bleeder cup on there, and now I have my syringe full of fresh brake fluid. I'm going to try to force fluid back in. Hold on a minute. Better get a pan or a rag to catch any drips. Okay, now we're ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah. I hear it bubbling down here. I'd like to get a visual on it. Ah, come on. We got our bleeder cup set up now. We have to recharge the force fluid in from this side. And we're going to see if we can get any fluid to come out from pumping the brake pedal. I don't own a power bleeder, that would have been ideal for this. Oh, 
feel like we're going anywhere. I wonder if I can pull a vacuum with this little syringe on here. I can, but I ran out of stroke. Seems to be working. And it's getting a bunch of air out of there. I couldn't get it to bleed back there, so I tried to bleed it here at this line just by pumping it pumping it and then loosening it here pumping it and loosening it here and i did that probably oh, 10 to 20 times and i wasn't hardly getting anything out of this fitting so i think the guts inside this uh, master cylinder might uh, be bad i'm gonna check and see how much a couple new master cylinders are or maybe they have a rebuild kit well, this is real cute. I uh, went to put the cap back on and it's missing the center section because it the plastic dried up and rotted out probably from the sun. The cool part is it's in there in a bunch of chunks. So now we're going to have to uh, fish all that out. That's great. Gone fishing. Like a piece of cardboard is the way to go. Well, that's how to keep the rainwater out until we can figure something out. Well, we wrestled the left side slash the outer master cylinder off of the tractor didn't come out too hard I think it was more difficult to remove that floorboard but it's a Girling 70 probably pronouncing that wrong but looks like Girling 70 master cylinder the hardest part of removing it was this pen down here was stuck in and you can see all kinds of the sand and dirt coming out of the uh, coming out of the master cylinder. So that probably attri attributed to its uh, failure, or it's just a really, really old. Might even be original. Who knows? Uh, it's got the yellow paint on it. So we're gonna take this apart and see if we can get a rebuild kit for it. I know I can get a whole new one, but they're ninety dollars and really don't want to spend uh, extra hundred and eighty dollars for this uh, master cylinder here we go jack support out here but we're just gonna mill this off because it's two different levels here
Nice flat reference surface here. Oh, I thought she was coming. Obviously not. comes the moment of truth and see if she's gonna come out of there there she is piston our seal that needs replaced and the spring there still appears to be something left in there which unfortunately I think that little shaft that's in the middle there was supposed to come out with the whole thing so might still be stuck in there Hmm. Hmm. We're working on the master cylinders for the brakes. You got the new ones in, and we're just trying to get the second uh, inner master cylinder out. And as you can see, everything's disconnected, if you can see in there with the lighting. Got the lines unhooked. But what we're having problems with, bring it around here, is this clevis on the end here. So we're going to have to saw that off because I can't get the pin to come out and we'll just put uh, a bolt in it for a regular pin or a pin if we have one probably just a bolt well we got it off but we kind of cut through it a little bit no big deal we'll uh, just clean that up with the angle grinder I think there's plenty more left on that clevis straighten it back out should be good to go. Nothing's easy when working on old tractors. But we got it. Okay, we got our two new master cylinders. This one we already modified the rod on the end, or the activation slash plunger rod, whatever you want to call it, is uh, not the correct length. This is the original. You line it up with the end of the housing. The plunger's right in the side there. The clevis comes down to about here. So I had to take a die and thread this shaft down.
approximately one inch and then cut off the extra length. This one's already modified. And I filed the inside of that to take care of all the sharp edges. So now we gotta do the same thing to this one. Okay everybody, I uh, already installed the first master cylinder back here. It's kind of buried in the dark, you can't really see much. But one important point that I found is on your master cylinder, make sure you install this top bolt before you start this line because once the line's in, maybe this bolt's too long, but in this particular application, you can't get the bolt in with the line in. So I had to unthread the line and put this bolt back in. Also, uh, another tip, uh, I'm not sure how it's gonna go yet until I hook the springs up, but uh, as I said, the first master cylinder is all installed. I didn't connect the pedals yet, but I did hang the new uh, extension springs in there to make that a little easier. So now we're gonna install the second one, the outer master cylinder, top bolt. Oh, man. Alright. Tip number two, make sure you have this hard line started in the bore before you put the bolts on. So my neighbor's mowing lawn in the dark, and I'd like to say that's really weird, but I'm out here putting my master cylinder on in the middle of the dark with a floodlight, so. Weird? Yeah, maybe. Weird compared to your neighbor? Probably not. Although I don't really mow in the dark. But I'll put a master cylinders on in the dark. Okay, that guy's tight. That guy's tight. <sighs> Mounting bolts are tight. So we already hooked up the inside master cylinder pedal. We had to use just a quarter 20 bolt because I don't have another clevis pin. And this is the clevis pin that's supposed to be on it. It has a little clip. It snaps around the head of the actual clevis. So we're going to put that in on this side. We got both master cylinders hooked into the hard lines, bolted in, attached to the back side, the back side of the pedals pedals are actually staying up because of the pressure and the master cylinders. All we need to do now is get those springs hooked up. So they're in there. We hooked them on before we put this on. Now the question is can we get them hooked up? Okay everyone, it's a uh, new part day. Let's see what we got. We got some new extension springs for the brake pedals. They look very similar to the ones I tried to put on yesterday. So this ought to be interesting. I was kind of hoping they would uh, be designed a little bit differently, have a bigger hook on the end, or I don't know, maybe be a little bit longer. So we're going to have to fight these on the uh, brake pedal somehow. And then we got also some new seals. These are for the brake rod that go into the rear end. Just a big rubber guy. Looks like it has a metal flange guy here that presses into the housing. So I think it goes in like this. 
presses into housing. And then the brake actuator rod goes through the middle. What we found is the one on the passenger side, or the right hand side, when sitting on the tractor, when you fill up the rear end, it just pisses away all out of here. So hopefully this will remedy that problem. And then the brakes for the brake pedals. We got two of these, same thing, uh, one for each side, even though only one side's leaking. So let's see if we can rustle these things on there. So here's the new brake spring, and then here's the generic one I tried to put on uh, yesterday. Looks like the one I tried to put on yesterday is actually longer, but it does have a smaller hook on the end, so maybe for lucky this bigger hook on the end will make it a little bit easier to get connected. We'll see. Uh, and here's where the uh, parts came from. Yesterday's tractor. I've had good luck with them so far. Everything that I asked for sent rather promptly, and for the most part so far, the, all the parts are right. Okay, so I did notice that the new springs, although shorter, the hooks are bigger and they're opposite. This one goes this way and this one goes the opposing way. And the first spring we hooked up such that it was like this, where this hooked on the top side and it reached in from the middle of the brake pedals and went in through that hole. So we're going to do the same thing on the other one, except it's going to be backwards it's going to come from the inside out on the actual brake pedal. I'll try to get you a better view on this one. It's just really tight in there and hard to see. So the first step is we'll hook our spring like so on the top side. Hold up. There it is. Okay, we're going to try to do the same thing we did last time. Last time we took our regular screwdriver, put it through the actual spring holes as a hook point for our pry bar. Now we'll take our pry bar. Take it through the bottom eye of the spring. Take the pry bar and hook it on the hook it around the edge of the screwdriver. And use that to slide your spring down. That didn't work. Try again. Here it is on uh, this side. This is the tappet lever that actuates the brake. Here's the uh, brake rod. And then this is the wheel cylinder down here. Right here is our bleed screw.
goes and it stops. Now I tested both sides individually because you can activate each side separately. Each side will stop the tractor, at least at the speeds that we were going. And when they're tied together, one side slightly off of adjustment to the other side. That's no big deal, that's just a little uh, adjustment on the activation rods. And also, we have to take the levers off completely to install those new seals we saw earlier. So, I think we're headed down the right path. It goes, the bucket tilts and doesn't dump automatically by itself, and you can stop it now. So, we fix those seals so we can fill the rear end with uh, oil, top off all the hydraulic fluids, and we'll be ready to do some trenching. All right. If you like this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up leave your questions and comments in the section below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button we'll give you a better test in the daylight tomorrow thanks for watching